Right. Good day, everyone. Hello, and welcome to Capson's webinar on how to meaningfully integrate sustainability in business schools. I am Bob McDonald, Capson's Director of Sales, and I'm pleased that you're here along with attendees from six continents and many countries to learn more about this topic. Um, you know, and again, uh, good good morning for some, good afternoon to others, and good evening for others yet still. We really appreciate you attending uh, this, 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 this webinar. So just a couple of housekeeping tips before we get started. First, uh, your questions and feedback are really important to us. Uh, we wanna make sure we, we get, your, get your questions and are able to respond to them. So Jordan and I will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. And if you have any questions, please throughout the webinar, use the Q&A box to enter in your questions and we'll get those at the end. Uh, we'll, we'll address those at the end of the webinar. Uh, attending microphones and, and cameras will be muted during the webinar to ensure the best possible webinar experience for everyone. And then lastly, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to registrants. So don't have to worry about that. We will send it, uh, send it a little bit after the webinar. So with those items out of the way, uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce Jordan Novak, who will be leading today's webinar. Jordan is Capstan's Vice President of Products and Services. He has more than a decade of experience leading product management, product strategy, and award and business simulations design, uh, design initiatives that have won industry awards for innovation and educational impact. Jordan also sits on the ACBSP Business Advisory Council, Council working with ACBSP leadership for innovation and uh, future business innovations. Uh, in addition to leading Capstan's product and services team. Jordan is also an instructor at DePaul's Dry House College of Business, where he teaches both graduate and undergraduate courses in management and strategy. Jordan's also led many leadership development programs at Fortune 100 companies as well. So the man knows his stuff. So Jordan, over to you. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Uh, welcome to... Before we jump into sustainability, uh, would like to just do a quick intro as to who we are. Um, at Capsum, we've been around for over 40 years, uh, bringing business education to Fortune 500 companies and universities. We really cut our teeth uh, in the early 80s, uh, working with those Fortune 500 companies, creating custom solutions. Back in the day when we had our simulations on floppy disks and even earlier technologies, then the, inter, uh, the internet kind of came around and that opened up some new doors for us to work with uh, colleges and universities. And that's where we are today. Uh, we have a couple arms to our business. We still work with those Fortune 500 companies, uh, but we also work with universities around the world. Hundreds of thousands of learners use our products each and every year, and they keep coming back. Uh, our clients keep coming back. and. The reason why is we have a joint uh, agreement on our philosophy, which is people learn best by doing. That's not to say that uh, current approaches to business education is poor, lectures are dead, nothing like that. I think those are, have uh, lots of value, uh, but where we come in is giving students and learners the experience of running a business, taking uh, a step in the life, you know, a, a day in the life of a role of a uh, professional. And we do that because, you know, in simulations, you could speed up time, you create this environment where students can fail early, fail often, and I'm not talking about grades, but uh, by managing their role or, or businesses. And we want them to, to fail early and often because that's where a lot of the, the key learning occurs. And our solutions are used. Uh, you can see just some of our customers over here on the right. Uh, they're used throughout the curriculum where we can stack concepts on top of each other uh, and scaffold the learning throughout. We'll talk a bit more about our, our products in, in just a moment, but we need to get into sustainability. So why sustainability? Why are we all in this webinar? And I think it's because we all care about this. We know we're on the, the precipice or we've been trying to deal with this for a little while, understand how do we really integrate sustainability um, and there's really a, a big shift that's happening right now. And I'll, I'll boil it down to three key reasons why we're, um, we're really talking about this, at least at Capson. But there's really a shift that's happening right now that I'm sure a lot of you are going through. Uh, look, 
in our colleges and universities, we're all trying to figure out how to tackle this, we're trying to figure out how to integrate sustainability, whether it's creating new courses, new majors, new concentrations, new departments, all of this is kind of springing up because we, we know it's important, but we need to tackle it in some way. So let's jump into those three reasons. Uh, I wanna start by talking about uh, our beloved accreditation organizations, those business school accreditation organizations like AACSB, ACBSP, uh, and, and, and several others. Uh, but those uh, two in particular have really started to talk about societal impact and sustainability a lot more. And I'll give you a, a real quick example. Uh, AACSB back in 2020 completely revamped their accreditation standards. Now all of their standards have societal impact and sustainability baked into them. And at the very end of their uh, standards report, they give you a nice a sample table, which it has four of their nine standards all lined up in this beautiful grid with the UN 17 sustainable development goals and thinking about getting you to think about how to align this. So that is coming from the accreditation organizations, which is getting into our administration, the conferences they're going to, deans and, and leaders in the business schools are really starting to think about this. So then that's getting into curricular review and our faculty, and ultimately what our students are learning in the classroom. So this, this is starting to create that shift. It's coming from the accreditation organizations and it's coming down throughout the administration and faculty. Also, you know, why we need to think about this is because it's how businesses are being run today and what they're talking about. So look, you'd be hard pressed to find a Fortune 1000 company right now, go to a Fortune 1000 company's website, probably adds the sustainability uh, to your search. And you're gonna see a really big push in terms of how they're communicating and not only communicating, but operating in terms of societal impact and sustainability. They're talking about how they work with their people, their customers, their employees, their community at large. And also what kind of impact do they have in the environment and climate? They're showing the climate reports. There's tons of CO2 emissions, getting to net zero emissions, all of these different things. So companies are investing in it and they're talking about it and they're communicating and they're building future organizations around this. And we've also learned that this is what you want. We've talked to hundreds of customers in just 2023 alone between conferences and one-on-one -on -one conversations about sustainability and what they're doing about it. And there's no doubt that there are uh, institutions that are really caring about this. They're working hard to try to figure this out. Look, I've had over 30 conversations alone with customers one-on-one -on -one to talk about this. And it's really going down to two key challenges and a gap that we see out there in the market. First challenge is, look, we know we have to put this into our curriculum. Do we create majors around this or concentrations? But we've heard that this is starting to feel tacked on. It's getting bolted on at some point in the curriculum that the majority of the students may or may not actually experience or, or learn about sustainability. The other challenge that we're hearing is with faculty, which are already busy enough. And they're trying to figure out, well, how do I incorporate sustainability? I don't want to water, water down some of the key concepts that I really have to teach my students. How do I teach all of those core concepts and add on everything with sustainability? And we found that there's starting to be, emerge some uh, best practices that are out there, which is do not just tack this on, don't bolt it on, don't offer this to a small part of your students, your student population, incorporate this throughout the curriculum and incorporate this within your functional experts, whether it's uh, leaders in domains like marketing, operations, supply chain, strategy. There are key societal impact uh, and, and sustainability issues that are core to each of those functional areas and domains. Think about those core learning objectives that you already have to teach your students and include that one or two key sustainability concept. Integrate it into your curriculum, don't bolt it on. That's what we're hearing as the new best practice that's, that's actually emerging. And that's become our North Star. How do we actually integrate this throughout the curriculum, throughout our products? And I wanna quickly introduce you to our products. I can see with some of the attendees here, 
some of you are actually quite familiar with what we do. But you can think of our product portfolio kind of in three buckets. One bucket is our business simulations. Think of these as uh, an opportunity to have your students enter the C-suite of a business where they take over a company that competes either against students or computers in a really competitive environment. These simulations generally take up about 25% of the course all the way through, it can be the entire offering that you have for the course where there's a lot of activities that are around this. Okay, and these simulations can either be for intro to business level concepts to uh, international concepts, strategic management. We have a really large breadth, uh, wide breadth of offerings there. So we have simulations. We also have simulated based assessments. And this is where we saw uh, several decades ago that there was a gap out there with assessment instruments where they assess knowledge, but they don't assess, assess the actual application. They don't bridge that knowing doing gap. And that's, that's what our uh, assessments really dive into. And they are great for uh, final exams. You can use them in pre post uh, environments for undergrad or graduate curricula. Uh, and it gives you a lot of great data uh, and, and plug and play reports that can be used for our accreditation uh, organizations that I talked about. Uh, so a lot of great stuff there. And then we also have micro simulations. And you can think of these as 30 to 60 minute day in the life experiences where we put the students in the role of a given professional and we assess and develop key skills around that, that vocation. So we have simulations, assessments, and micro simulations, and we're incorporating sustainability within each of these. And we're gonna talk about uh, all of that and, and what our uh, endeavors are right now. I'm gonna jump into uh, the simulation component though, and talk about how we're including simulations and sustainability. And I'm gonna be talking about Capstone 2.0. It's our flagship, most robust product. Uh, but like I said, we have several other products that are available for, for different needs throughout the curriculum. But our simulations are really built to be flexible and relevant because everything's changing, right? Uh, we need to have versatile products that adapt to those, those ever-changing needs. Working with thousands of schools, we've learned that no school teaches strategic management the same way. Everyone has different takes on how they want to uh, talk about it, different learning objectives that are used, different approaches, different experience from faculty. So we want our products to be really versatile, to really tap into those changing needs. And there are so many fun features to play with. I can't even get into a fraction of it in today's webinar, but you can really customize the experience, uh, play around with the economic conditions, choose how to score this. What, what do you actually measure as a, as what is a successful business actually defined as? You can add depth and breadth to a variety of concepts with these, uh, with additional modules. We'll be talking about an integrated module today, which really helps us extend to pressing concepts like sustainability. And I'm gonna get into a, a bit of a tour of uh, Capstone 2.0 with sustainability and show you actual screenshots of, of what this is gonna look like. Um, but I wanna take a step back and say, you know, we've I've talked to so many customers that my team has talked to so many customers, our company has, and there's been a prevailing thought, which has been Capstone, we love your simulations. They really tap into all the cross-functional decision-making. It's got, it's robust, it's really flexible, but we need you to bolster some content around sustainability. These were a bit of whispers to us a couple of years ago. Those whispers had turned into roars. Everyone's been really talking about it. And they said, really what we want you to also help us do is redefine what running a successful business looks like. And that's what I want to start with, which is kind of getting beginning with the end in mind here and talking about how we're adding a different type of scoring. Again, this is all optional. If you're already using our products and you love how it works, great. You can continue doing that. But if you want to take a sustainability focus, we've added a new way of really defining what running a successful business looks like, taken from the literature that's the academic literature that's out there uh, and how corporations actually talk about uh, sustainability, looked at the triple bottom line. 
looking at, of course, you have to run a profitable company and stay afloat and, and be able to have future growth. But what are you actually doing with your existing stakeholders, your people, whether it's the customers that you're selling your products to, the employees that are working, or your community at large? And then what impact do you have that's out there in the planet? And I'll be going into how we're actually going to tap into all of these different things. But that, this is really redefining what success, running a successful business looks like. So let's go through the, the student experience a little bit. I'm going to show you uh, research and development, marketing, production, human resources, and finance, and how we're adding some of these decisions. But research and development, this is where students are managing, taking over an existing company, right? We put them into, you're managing a $100 million company. You create these uh, sensors, these electronic sensors that are used in all sorts of different products. Now we put you into looking at your portfolio management and understanding how to manage your existing products. How do you want to tailor them to the changing customer needs over time? Do you want to launch new products? How do you want to differentiate yourself in the market? Do you want to cost lead or differentiate? I think all of these different uh, aspects of order and Mintzberg and strategy. And then we started to add some new sustainability decisions around getting them to think not just about tactical positioning out in the marketplace, but also what's the impact our products have in the environment? What kind of electronic waste are we producing there? And is there anything that we can do about it? So we added a new decision around your recycle, your inputs to your product and thinking about if you're going to add recycled material and what percentage of your product is going to source from recycled material across your entire product portfolio. And ultimately, as you increase the amount of uh, recyclable materials that go in it, what does that actually do to your waste output? And of course, it's going to have some other impacts uh, throughout the, the business environment around things like demand or how long it takes to re-engineer the products. We're not going to get into all those details. And I'm going to pause here and say there was no shortage of ideas that both our customers and our team uh, here at Capsum has had in terms of how can we incorporate these decisions into our simulations? We've looked at hundreds of companies and how they talk about sustainability. So the, the challenge really became, how do we balance this experience? We don't, our customers don't want a sustainability only simulation. They want the sustainability concerns uh, and choices coming up within the context of ready running a, an existing business. All right, so research and development, uh, again, managing your product portfolio, repositioning a market, thinking about not only your how you're differentiating yourself, but now what kind of an impact do our products have in the environment? We'll look at the other three P's of marketing here uh, on the marketing specific page. And you're not gonna see a new sustainability decision here because there's already a lot of things that are going on with marketing, some challenging decisions like around forecasting. But we also look at marketing as product, price, promotion, place. So that product aspect is really research and development, which is an extension of marketing. But for those that are not familiar with our products, marketing, this is where they're looking at, all right, how many products do we have out there in the environment and, and how competitive are they? How do we want to price our products compared to our competitors? How do we want to invest in marketing to make sure that customers know about our products and can easily get them? And then how many units do we think we're going to sell? So after they make their marketing decisions, we get them to put their hard hats on and realize that they now have to produce all of these units and actually supply them into the marketplace for their customers. So students are going to be scheduling how many units are going to be produced and decide if they want to if they need more capacity based on you know current production needs and how do we add some efficiencies we also want them to realize that they have a carbon footprint because they are producing millions of units so what is that impact and we have them start thinking about emissions and the more they produce the higher their emissions are going to be we get them to think about things like CO2 emissions, tons of CO2 emissions that are emitted into the environment. Again, trying to find analogous examples of, of how corporations talk about this today. But don't worry, there's ways to offset this. There's ways to reduce your emissions. 
And this is gonna be some new choice that they have where they can think about in their supply chain, who are they sourcing from? Are they going to source from a very extreme uh, sustainable option where they really pride themselves on sustainability and maybe there's some uh, increased cost because of that? Or do they wanna you know, focus more on cost leading and, and reducing costs and maybe having the choice of uh, a less sustainable option? We also give them the option to invest in renewable energy. This is where students can invest in things like hydro, solar, wind energy, which will ultimately reduce emissions over time as well. So research and development, launch those products, reposition in the marketplace, think about marketing and, and pricing and promoting and, and think about how they can access their products and then uh, produce those products and think about how uh, our products and our company have an impact on the environment. So we talked a lot about the planetary aspects of sustainability, but there's also the, the people side as well. And that's where they have to think about some of their stakeholders, not only just their customers, but their employees and the community at large. And we have a revamped human resources uh, department where students have the opportunity to invest in different types of training, where they can uh, invest in supply, uh, safety, compliance, technical training, really driving at concepts around uh, are employees safe and can do their job well? Are they physically safe and also psychologically safe to do their job? And then we give them some levers to invest in their people in other ways, like comp and benefits, right? And we give them some different options to be more, uh, more of a leading option in terms of benefits. And this is, again, where we look at uh, companies at large and how they talk about sustainability and how they talk about people. And when they talk about that, they talk about paying not only a living wage, but uh, a thriving wage to their employees. And what kind of work-life balance do they get into? And what kind of benefits are offered in terms of medical, dental, and, and vision? So that's where we give students the ability to uh, choose different benefits policies for their employees. They can also recruit and retain workers and get involved with the community. So you can think of this as uh, with the community programs decision, paid volunteer work, where they can, the company not only invest financially to these different uh, offerings, but they also invest in their employees' time to serve in those uh, different offerings, those different programs. And ultimately what this is driving is how satisfied are your employees, your customers, and the community at large. All right, so once they've made all of these decisions, well, they have to pay for it all. And this is, brings them into the finance uh, department where they have to decide, you know, they have to manage their cash flow, decide if they need to raise capital for investments and decisions, or if they have some excess capital, if there's some uh, financial decisions they can make there. We also are giving them a new decision around charitable donations. This is where Students can donate a percentage of their company's profit, keyword profit. We don't want students that are struggling or running their companies down into a cliff to also be investing millions in charitable donations. Again, finding uh, analogous examples of corporations and how they do giving, charitable giving. So again, giving into the community, thinking about the people side of our triple bottom line. All right, with all of that to say, Capstone 2.0 is going to now have sustainability as of August 15th. I want to remind everyone that this is optional. If you want to add on those sustainability decisions, including the triple bottom line, and it is included with the existing simulation price. Okay. There are so many different ways that you can customize and configure uh, this a solution for your students uh, and, and keep it fresh and modern and, and prevailing with the ever-changing uh, way of business, uh, I can get, really encourage you to engage in a conversation with us about it because I was only able to talk high level about what we're doing on the sustainability side, but we need to hear from you as to what are some of your challenges. Once we roll this out uh, August 15th, we have several other business simulations. So we're going to start rolling that into our other more intro to business or international or operations focused simulations. But now I wanna pass it over to Bob, who's gonna be talking about our assessments 
and micro simulations and what we're doing on sustainability there. Bob, over to you. All right, thanks, Jordan. I really appreciate it. Before I uh, talk about our uh, assessments and micro simulations, I do wanna remind you that the Q&A function is available. So if you have any questions about Capstone 2.0 and the integrated approach to sustainability, please uh, please use the chat function and we'll get to those in our Q&A function uh, session a little bit later. So as Jordan mentioned earlier, Capstone's philosophy is that uh, people learn best by doing. And that also extends to Capstone's approach to assessments and micro simulations. You know, about, uh, about 20 years ago, there were, we saw that there were a lot of assessment options uh, on, in the marketplace. But essentially, most of those were focused on assessing memory retention with really no situational context uh, associated with them. And so the results of those assessments are not surprising that they're not very predictive of career success and not very useful uh, on the job, right? So, uh, so essentially what we focused on in Capson was taking a different approach you know, a long time ago. So we created simulation-based assessments that measure individuals' core knowledge of key business concepts and their ability to apply that knowledge in immersive and dynamic experiences. So an example of this simulation-based assessment approach is Capson Inbox XM. Capsum Inbox XM is an add-on uh, to Capsum's business simulation experiences. And with Capsum Inbox XM, it's, it's a natural extension to the Capstone 2.0 experience as students go from working on teams to being a CEO of a sensor company, uh, having to report to a board of directors. So in this simulation, in the simulation-based assessment, students are getting emails from, from the board and asking them uh, to answer questions about such topics related to accounting, finance, human relations or human resources, marketing, operations and strategy. And starting on August 15th, we'll also be adding sustainability topics to the Capsum Inbox experience. Uh, and so that students will get a, not just a, uh, an example of, of content, but they'll have it in a simulation basic environment where they have to apply that knowledge in real time. So just a quick recap, with Capsum Inbox XM, professors can add an individual focused, individually focused assessment to follow the team-based Capstone 2.0 experience. Uh, it includes sustainability. The, the, the exam itself, Capsum Inbox XM, takes about two hours to complete. And as Jordan mentioned earlier, flexibility is a key component of Capsum's uh, simulations. It's also a key component of Capsum Inbox XM, where questions can be added, questions can be subtracted. So you can get the assessment that's tailored to how you teach your class. And that's, that's really important uh, with that. And just one other note, Capsum sustainability questions will be added to all of our assist assessment platforms, including Modular XM and CompXM and, and our other products as well. So you have uh, sustainability, no matter what assessment you're using, uh, you will have those, those questions associated uh, available in, um, in August 15th, at August 15th. Now, Capsum is also making it easier to integrate sustainability across business schools with our 30 minute micro simulations that focus on sustainability topics. Uh, these, these micro simulations uh, uh, will be, uh, yeah, think of it this way. Imagine you're, you're, you're able to put your students in real life situations where they may, uh, for instance, be a sustainability officer at a global energy company that's having challenges with emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, or maybe um, you have a, a, a student placed in the role of a CEO of a tech startup that has supply chain issues because they're, some of the raw materials used in their product is, is, is not ethically sourced. It has some challenges with that. And so with these, these inbox sustainability simulations, students get two things. One, they get an experience of what, what it's like to deal with the complexities of sustainability, some of the trade-offs that necessarily need to be made, but they're also being assessed on the soft skills that are essential for sustainability and uh, also being having the chance to align those, those skills with global standards on sustainability as, as well. But more to come soon about the, about the uh, sustainability uh, series uh, in the next, next uh, few weeks. All right, so let's, uh, let's do a quick recap of, of where we're at so far. So as Jordan mentioned, 
sustainability is here to stay. It's been here for a while and it's going to be here for a long time in terms of how, how businesses operate and need to operate. But we've also identified that there's a gap in trying to incorporate sustainability into business school programs. Uh, some, you know, whether they're uh, tacked on experiences or uh, uh, in, place, in places where students don't get uh, exposure to these sustainability topics, this was a gap. And so Capsum in our, in our conversations with you, with our clients, with corporations, uh, really realized that there was a need for an integrated sustainability business module, which reflects actually how businesses conduct sustainability. It's not an add-on, it's an everyday occurrence in, in these corporations. And also, we also wanted to make sure that uh, we could measure the impact of sustainability initiatives, both for accreditation and also for programmatic improvement with that. Um, lastly, uh, we looked at creating sustainable solutions that are agile and relevant and can be dropped in across the curriculum. So with our inbox uh, sustainability series, which will be coming up, you'll be able to drop business schools will be able to drop these 30 minute simulations across the curriculum, giving more students exposure to sustainability topics and, and the challenges associated with uh, implementing sustainability based for, you know, in, in real life case studies based on um, uh, stories that come right out of the news. So we're looking forward to adding those uh, uh, as well. So um, just a quick recap. Before we get done, in terms of time time frames, August fifteenth, I think we've mentioned it a couple of times. The uh, the, sustain, the integrated sustainability module will be available in Capstone two point uh, and it's included in the price of the simulation. Uh, Capstone Inbox XM with the sustainability questions and the Capstone Inbox sustainability series will be also be available on August fifteenth as well. So, the pathway forward. And again, just a quick reminder, if you have questions, please add them in, in the Q&A. After we, in a couple minutes, Jordan and I will go through this, the questions and answer them uh, as best we can. If we don't get your questions, we will certainly follow up after the webinar uh, and make sure you get an answer with them. So at Capsum, our, we're focused on making sure that our clients and our customers have a, an outstanding experience. That's why we wanna learn more about how you teach sustainability and, and approach sustainability in your program. So we'd love to have a conversation about how you implement uh, sustainability and some of the challenges that, that you may be facing right now in, in, your, in your courses or in your departments or at your business school. Secondly, we'd invite you to, to set up a, a, a customized demo of, uh, of our, our simulation experiences or our Capstone 2.0 uh, uh, sustainability series or our assessments or micro simulations. To do this, you simply click on the QR code, uh, grab the QR code, and that will send you to a form where you can set an appointment. Or if you want to go old school, you can send to me a, an email at bob.mcdonald.capsum.com, and we will, I will get back to you as soon as possible uh, and arrange a time again. Uh, we very much want to hear your, your questions, your, your initiatives, and how we can be helpful in supporting those uh, is what we're here and what we're all about. So with that, uh, let's go to the, the questions the, in the Q&A forum. Okay, um, we have a couple of questions with this. Jordan, one question, uh, and I'll, I'll read them because you know you're the product person, you know all things. So um, one of the questions is, um, uh, is, is, Capsum, is, uh, is Capsum GDPR compliant? I guess I'll summarize that. Yeah, there's a, a short answer and a long answer. Uh, short answer, yes, we are GDPR compliant. Uh, the long answer is yes, we are GDPR compliant. Okay, great. Um, have a, a question from Anthony Stanowski. Uh, hopefully, Anthony, I get your name correct. Um, so Anthony is a CEO of a commission on accreditation of healthcare management and education. And uh, he would like to know if he could uh, uh, create a presentation or we could talk to him about how this could be in incorporated into his his world uh, uh, and be have caps and part of the discussion. Do you see an application for um, accreditation of healthcare management education as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. And Anthony, we'd love to engage you uh, offline probably to talk about some of the specific needs that you have there. Um, but absolutely. I mean, whether it's healthcare management, business education, whatever it may be, um, it, it's sustainability and societal impact is here to stay. And um, we'd love to be able to help you in any way possible, uh, sharing some of our resources, our contacts, our research uh, to help you craft a way forward with that. Great. Uh, uh, Susanna, uh, we have a question from Susanna, Susanna Vallis Castrillon. Castrillon, Castr sorry, uh, Susanna. AACSB has new accreditation standards include to, that include societal impact. AACSB recommends that business schools use the UN Sustainable Development Goals as a framework to measure societal impact. Could you tie the new sustainability features of the simulation to specific UN goals? Great question. Um, so short answer, yes, we can absolutely crosswalk how our products actually map to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 UN SDGs. Uh, and between our simulations, micro simulations and assessments, you'll be able to, to fill that, that table up uh, quite easily. Uh, quick note, I, I don't think AACSB you know, explicitly says that you have to, but as soon as they put that table right into their uh, their standards report, a lot of people are going to think about that. And I, I think I'm thinking about the same one as you, Susan, where it shows standards, uh, the four standards uh, around strategy, uh, curricula, um, and so on. So uh, yes, we can absolutely crosswalk that for you. And you'll see that um, most of uh, most, if not all of the 17 sustainable development goals are actually uh, assessed or developed throughout our products. And just, just briefly, the, the micro simulations are built on a UNESCO framework of the eight competencies for sustainability that UNESCO has identified. So uh, we do have, uh, and Jordan's done a lot of research certainly on aligning with the SDG goals, but uh, also our micro simulations are built on a framework uh, uh, come, that comes out of UNESCO specifically. So be happy to share you a little bit, share a little bit about you uh, with you about those uh, that, that framework as well. All right. Uh, question from Ann Fuller. Uh, do you anticipate adding these features into Capstone in the future or only to 2.0? Yeah, we're gonna start, uh, great question. We're gonna start uh, with our newer simulations, uh, Capstone 2.0, Capstone Core, Capstone Ops, and Capstone Global. The, the focus is going to be to get those into uh, those newer, what we call our platform simulations, because they're a lot easier uh, to develop into and to make sure that uh, we don't introduce any issues. Also, a lot of our customers that use Capstone and, and Foundation, they don't want any changes at all. Uh, so if you are still using Capstone, I really encourage you, uh, let, we should absolutely talk offline um, and, and talk about some of the benefits of, of using Capstone 2.0 or if you're using Foundation, uh, using Cap, uh, Capstone Core. Uh, we really think that that is a, a fantastic learning experience that your students should uh, definitely check out. Okay, thanks, Jordan. I have one more question from, uh, from Dorothy Chambers. How could I incorporate sustainability into my grade 11 class, into my high school class? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. It depends on what you're teaching in your grade 11 class. Uh, if it's just a, an intro to business, uh, it really depends on, on, on how that's being taught. But I would again say, let's have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of those, uh, uh, K-12 courses that have business, it's going to be more introductory to business. So we have a great product that uh, works with that. Uh, Caps and Core is probably what I would recommend. And that's where you get them to kind of see the force from the trees and expose them to the different types of decisions that a business makes. And that's where I was walking through a bit of the, the, the R&D decisions and marketing, production and finance. And then we slowly integrate, you know, as they get exposed to those different aspects of the business, what are the societal and sustainability impacts that we need to think about through those different functional lenses? And then, of course, how do all of those decisions work with each other? But again, let's have a 
a one-on-one -on -one conversation about that so I can not make too many assumptions about what you're teaching in your grade 11 course. Uh, but we, we have uh, several clients that uh, use us in uh, grade 11, 12 uh, business courses. Fantastic. And we have one, one other question from Pro Professor Ali. Uh, great to see you, Professor Ali. Uh, one of the questions was on balance, uh, BSC, BSC scoring. Was that learning and growth initiatives are relatively easy to score uh, than the other three, and hence 25% weightage was a bit too much, the same as finance, which was tough to score. I hope the triple bottom line would do justice to the scoring based on difficulty rather than apportioning equal weightage for the sake of it. Yeah, and that's all about balancing the experience, right? And saying that all of these aspects uh, are critical and important, and we encourage any and all feedback, and we'll be monitoring how uh, the scoring plays out um, across the balanced scorecard, or rather across the triple bottom line. You know, and with that, um, I, I saw another question in there, so I, I'll dovetail uh, that question into this as well, which is, you know, how do you, you know, why not incorporate sustainability into the balanced scorecard? And I can answer that with two, uh, with with two things. Number one. Uh, the vast majority of the people that we talked to have said, please give us the triple bottom line. We want to reframe how uh, we actually talk about running, you know, what it is to run a successful business uh, in today's day and age. Uh, but we also know that lots of our customers use the Balanced Scorecard. And in fact, there's a great white paper that's out there from Balanced Scorecard Institute, which talks about how you actually incorporate sustainability concepts and goals and metrics within the balance scorecard. So the framework's there, you can still incorporate it within the four different pillars of the balance scorecard. As an example, internal business processes are looking at things like the waste and emissions reductions. Uh, so that's definitely a possibility for the future, uh, but we wanna hear from you a bit more and understand what your needs are um, and how we could best serve that in the future. Great, and we got one more in your, uh, VP of Product and Services, Crystal Ball. Uh, when do you think this will come, sustainability will come to Capsum Core? Uh, soon, soon. <laughs> I'm so hesitant to give a, a deadline on that, but uh, I can give you a little bit of our philosophy on, on how we're gonna launch this. So August 15th, we'll launch it to Capstone 2.0, and we'll do a lot of monitoring on the experience uh, and talking to our customers that are uh, going to first adopt it. Uh, so I think we're going to do a bit of calibration at that point to make sure that when we bring this experience over to our other simulations, that it's a consistent and, and well calibrated, well balanced experience. Um, so in the in the near future, uh, best guess is uh, sometime uh, early to mid 2024. Great, thank you, Jordan. All right. So looks like uh, in fact, oh, another question. Thanks, Charlotte. Uh, scroll down there. What about sustainability in the global version in Capsum Global? Same answer. Uh, again, our our plan is to roll this out to uh, Capstone uh, 2.0, Capsum Core, Capsum uh, Global, uh, and and some other business simulations as well. So. Uh, once we, we calibrate that experience and we balance it, we'll be bringing it over to those other products. But again, um, now that we, we have this in the chat, uh, we also invite you, let, let's have a conversation about it uh, so we can uh, maybe show you or, or give you an early access demo, uh, even if it might be in another product, just so you can kind of see how it plays out. That's a great idea. Yeah, certainly if your focus is on Caps and Global, let's take a look at Capstone 2.0 so you can get an understanding of the of the various decisions and levers and thinking about how that could be incorporated or have some give us some feedback of perhaps how that could be incorporated into core and into global. So fantastic. Uh, just checking. Fantastic. Um, great. So again, thank you. Jordan for for uh, doing the lion's share of this of this of this webinar. Really appreciate your thoughtful and concise overview of how Capsum is integrating sustainability across the curriculum, particularly in Capstone 2.0.
I would like to thank uh, everybody who attended too. I know there are people distributed across across uh, all the time zones uh, who came here today. And again, we do appreciate your your interest and do appreciate the chance to have a conversation with you. And then lastly, just as a reminder, this was, this webinar has been recorded. So we will be able to send a, a, a this out to you in, in, the, in the near future, along with the slide decks. And again, uh, we're always here for conversation and looking forward to building this product and getting your guidance as we as we go forward to really help business schools achieve an integrated approach to delivering sustainability. Again, thank you everyone and look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Take care. Take care everyone.